All right, so now let's go ahead and do some ex exception handling because even though the question didn't say, it's, it's kind of good practice to do that. All right, so any line or any portion of your code that has the potential to uh, raise an exception or raise an error, you have to kind of have a handler, which means code to do something when that error occurs. Because if you don't do that, then your program is going to crash. So you need to kind of handle that or create code to handle, yeah, create code to handle that. All right, so when I look through my code, I know this here has the potential to cause an error if, for example, the user gave it a file that does not exist in this folder. Let's say we know the file that we're going to read from is random numbers.txt. If the user provides, or if we provide to this function here, display numbers, a different file name, we, we can get an error. So let's just test it out and see. When I change this random numbers.txt to random, let's say, numbers, okay, without the B, and I run it, it says, we see an error here, no such file, well, it says built uh, file not found error, right? No such file or directory, random num numbers or txt. That's true because it was trying to open this file, this random numbers to txt in this folder, and it couldn't find it. D there is random numbers to txt, but there's nothing like random numbers. So it's telling you there is no error. So if your program was created like this, it would crash. See, it doesn't display anything to the user. It just crashes, and you don't want your program to crash. So you have to kind of have code to do something or display something nice to the user when th things like these happen. All right, so let's fix this back to random numbers, run the program, and it's, it's working nicely. But we, we haven't solved it. So I'm going to wrap a try statement around this, a try um, yeah, statement around this, because I know this has the potential to create or to, uh, to create an exception, an error. So I'm going to wrap the try around it. Uh, this doesn't have the potential. Well, this is not going to, I don't think it's going to cre uh, create any exception. Same with this, but this is also reading from the file. So let's see. Actually, what we can do is, let's see. Yeah. Um, so okay, so what I can see is this has the potential to create a, um, an IO error. So actually, let's let's just undo it. So I but what I did was I just called the I, I typed the try statement. So this line here has the potential to create an IO error, which is basically uh, an input output stuff, something that has to do with a file, like a file doesn't exist or something like that. These are fine. They don't. I don't think they have any potential to cause an error. But this one, well, well these well these are fine for now. Even though if the, if they can. Um, it's fine. Let's include let's include them all in the block. Anything that has the potential to create an error, we want to kind of handle it. This line I know has the potential to create an error when the file again does not exist or it, or it's it has difficulties trying to read from the file. Again, over here we have some code. This line over here um, will raise an, a kind of some kind of exception when it's it can't convert. Any um, when it can convert what's stored in line to an end. So basically, let's wrap all this block, the block of code over here, with a try statement because you know there are lines in this block that have the potential to create different kind of errors, and these errors have names. Each of them have names, so they have the potential to create different kind of errors. So I'm going to wrap them all with a try statement. So I'm going to indent it with that in the try, and I'm going to call accept. And I'll explain what this means in a second. All right, so what I'm saying is try to run this block of code. But but if you, let's say, encounter an exception, I'm sorry. If you encounter, sorry. If you encounter an exception, that's what this means, then print out a message. Let's just create this line here. Go ahead and print out the message. That says an error occurred for now. Okay, an error occurred. Let's do that for now. So try to run this block of code, but if you encounter an exception, print out an error occurred. Let's see what happens. So let's run this. And because an exception didn't occur, because no error occurred, it tried to run this code, no error occurred. So it skipped this exception part and then continued with the rest of the code. So let's try and change the name of the file to numbers back to numbers. 
it's going to try to run this block to see if it finds any error. Of, right? So run this program, and it says an error kit. But we also have an error somewhere here. And so what is happening is it tried to run this block. It realized over here that this numbers or txt doesn't exist. All right. So so because there's an exception, it jumped to this accept block and then displayed this message here. But it was it didn't done. Oh, sorry sorry sorry. It wasn't done. <laughs> uh, what I meant to say was it didn't stop there. Um, and actually it wasn't actually done. When it printed this message, it wasn't done. So after printing this an error kit, it also continued with the program. We don't want that to happen. What we want the pro the way we want the program to work is we want it to try to run this block of code. And if nothing happens and everything is fine, then ignore this accept block and continue with the rest of the code. But if something happens, if there's an exception, jump to this accept accept block, run what's in here, and then stop. Don't run anything else. But it, the way we've restructured it, 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 it's going to display the error message and continue down below. So I'm going to add an else, and I'll explain what this means in a second. Else uh, statement to this. And then I'm going to go ahead and adjust this part here to fall in the else else um, else statement all right so I'll explain what this means in a second here all right so what I'm trying to say with this else is try to run um, what's stored in so I'll try to run what's in this block if you encounter any error if you encounter any exception jump to this accept block or this accept part and run this statement okay and then and then stop the program okay stop if you encounter an exception, display the error message and stop the program. Else means that, okay, else means else if you didn't encounter any exception, then run this part. So that means that you try to run this block of code. If you didn't encounter any exception, then skip this accept part and then run this block of code. It means else if there's no exception, else if there's no exception, then run this block of code. But if you find an exception, jump to this accept, accept part of the code display the error message and stop there don't even continue the else part and stop there that's what it means okay um, so let's try that now and see what happens so it says now an error kit because an error kit it just displayed the error message and then stop there because that's what it's supposed to be else will only run if there's no exception all right so let's now change this back to numbers the txt which means there's not going to be an exception so it's going to try to run there's not going to be an exception and it's going to jump to this else part. If there's no exception, then the else part will run. When I run this program, you can see that everything is running perfectly. All right, so let's also do a few things. Well, when we are done displaying the message, we also want to go ahead and close the file, right? So let's close the file that we opened over here, which is random numbers file. I'm going to copy it. So else, once you're done displaying the message, random numbers file dot close. Let's go ahead and close that. Also, I'm going to add one more, one more part of this entire try except you know I'll uh, suit um, block. I'm going to add finally. Okay, so it's all part of this, and you see they're all aligned. Finally, it finally is used to, for example, close files. Actually, we close our file here, but it's used to close files and do anything that you have to do f f um, finally. It has nothing to do with else or accept or try. Finally, will run what's stored, in, what's in, or what's under. Finally, will run regardless of whether there's an exception or not. Regardless of whether whether the exception uh, part run or whether the else part run. Finally, will always run regardless of whatever happens here with them. It doesn't care about any of these. Finally, will run each time, every single time. But except will run only when there's an exception. Else will run when there's no exception. But finally, will run either case. It doesn't care what happens here. Okay. So finally, let's let's display a message. Let's print out the message saying that end of program, something like this, end of program. Um, so let's run this. It says end of program. Let's actually create a line break before that. Let's use a new line character backslash n. It's going to, be, because before displaying end of program, it's going to move the position from its current line to the next line. And anything that comes after that new line character will be displayed from that next line going. So I run that. So it's kind of separated nicely. All right, so let's see. I think we're actually done. Let's run this. Let's change the name of the file over here to, let's say, 
random numbers at txt. That file doesn't exist. It's going to try to read that file from the folder. It doesn't exist, so it's going to face an exception. So when I run this, it says an error kit and a program. But the thing is, this is not helpful. This information is not helpful. It says an error kit. What error kit? So okay, so if an error kit, that means that means an exception has been thrown, right? And anytime an exception is thrown over here, anytime an exception is thrown, what's called an exception um, object is created in memory. Well, first of all, I happen to know that personally. I happen to know that. Where is this? I happen to know that this error that has occurred, okay, is because of this of this file name here. So I, it's called what's? I mean, I remember I mentioned that each of these errors have a name. This particular error is called an I/O error, okay. So I can actually be explicit and, t and say that try to run this code, but when you face or when you encounter an I/O error, that's how it's spelled. Then print out a message. Um, there was a problem with uh, a file being opened, something like that, right? This message, this message here, will be only displayed if there is an, an I/O error. If there's any type of error, nothing will happen. It has to be an I/O error. But I happen to know that if we, you know, this particular error here is an I/O error. So when I run it, it says there was a problem with a file being opened, which means the program knows this is an I/O error. Actually, what happened was an I/O error. Now there are so many error names. There's an I/O error. There's a value error. But sometimes you don't know all of them, right? Sometimes you you know sometimes your program can have so many errors popping up. If you know that okay in this block of code only an I/O an I/O error can occur, you can do this. But then sometimes in your block of code you know that there are so many types of error that can occur, and you don't know their names or you don't know which ones that that can occur. So you can use a generic name for all errors. Okay. You can use a generic name for error. You don't want to say okay except I/O error. Or you, you want to create another accept block and say accept value error or accept this error. There are so many error names, but you can use a generic name for all errors. Now, anytime, okay, anytime an exception is thrown, anytime there's an error, an, an exception is thrown, okay, an error means an exception has been thrown. So, anytime an exception is thrown, an exception object is created in memory. Okay, an exception object is created in the memory. Now you can assign that exception object to a variable, to any variable, so that that variable will contain information about that particular exception object. Okay, that particular exception object will contain the, the information about that particular error, the, the error message, and all that stuff. So the way you assign that exception object to a variable is this. So you don't know if it's an IO error or a value error. You want to, you know, basically say that. If there is any type of exception, exception, and the way you do that is accept exception, which means that you don't know if it's, if it's an I/O error, you don't know if it's a value error, but if you face an exception, okay, and if you face an exception, exception here, exception here means general exception, whether it's an I/O error, it's a value error. If you face any kind of exception, assign it to a variable, and I'm going to use the keyword as. And I'm going to create any variable. I'm going to create over here a random variable. I'm going to call it potential error. Potential error. This is just a name that I have come up with, potential error. So what I'm saying is try to run this block of code. But if you face an exception of a generic type, okay, this is the exception object that's being created. Assign that error. Assign, or assign that exception object to this potential error variable, to this regular variable, which means assign all the information about that error to this variable. Okay, so at first I use value error, which means I know that it's a value error. But if you don't know, see, what this means is try to run this block. But if you face any exception of an exception, a general exception type, okay, if, if you, whether it's an error, error, value error, if you face any kind of error here. Okay, as a, you know, then assign that general error. Okay, assign that error, that particular error, to this variable, which means assign the object to this variable. Or at the same time, it means assign all the information about that error to this variable. Now, when you print out this variable, it's going to print out the error message, that particular exact error message, that error message that we were seeing here that said no such file or you know something like that. You know, when when we made a, an error, a mistake with a file name. That error message that was displayed here that said um, that file couldn't be found, something like that. It, when you print out this variable, that's 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 containing the 
or oh, that's storing the um, exception object or the memory address of the exception object when you print it out it's going to display the particular error message that has occurred so instead of saying there was a problem with a file being open let's let's go just go ahead and just print out this variable and again because it, it, will, it will contain the exact error message so let's write something like this error colon and then let's pass in as another argument potential error like this okay so error by default when you pass in multiple arguments into the print function they are separated with a space so it's going to display error colon and then a space and then potential error because there are two different arguments separated with a comma here so let's try this run and now instead of displaying that message the previous message is now saying error which is this message here and then this variable will contain all the information about the error, error message when you print it out it's going to display the exact error message it says error 2 no such file or directory random numbers to txt if I change this to something else you know DSS run it says error no such file or directory DSS to txt and it's true it's trying to reopen this folder and look for a file called DSS to txt it can't find it, and that's why it's given us this error but there's a file called random numbers to txt and when we provide that f file name random numbers txt it can find it so it tries to run this block no errors are, are encountered okay so it go, jumps to the else block displays all the details and then finally it ends the program see that's exactly what's happening here okay but if there is an error with a file name just like we saw let's change this to num numbers nums okay it tries to read something from the file uh, sorry from this block of code it encounters an error because it doesn't know what this file is and it encounters an exception all right so we are saying if it find if it finds an exception okay if, if it finds a general exception if it finds an exception which is a general exception okay an exception of a, of a general exception type assign that exception object because anytime an, an error is um, thrown anytime an exception is thrown an exception object is created in memory so when that uh, when when that exception object has been created in memory assign it to this variable okay that's why we're using s this variable this is a name i came up with assign it to this variable and then when you print out okay this variable this object this variable which contains the exception object will contain all the information about the error when you print out this variable in a in a print function for example it will display the exact error message and that's exactly what we're doing here so because it, it can't find this it will, it will there will be an exception it will try to run this block there will be an exception it's going to an exception will be thrown right so it's going to um, assign that particular exception to this variable and display the exact message and then the else part won't run because with the, you know there was an exception but finally will run because finally doesn't care what happens here finally runs regardless of what happens here whether except runs or whether else runs so run this and it says error no such file directory and random numbers of txt let's fix it to random numbers of txt because there's a file called random numbers of txt and that shouldn't give us an error so we see that that's working perfectly all right all right so i know that uh, it was a bit rough i know that um in all the in the other uh, chapter six programs i also talk about exceptions so maybe if you watch one of those maybe the way i explain it maybe it may be helpful but that's the idea of exception exception handling um, um there's there's a bit more to it but basically this is it um and this program um works so we're done with this and we've done we've done exactly what the question said all right so if you have any questions please comment down below and i'll do everything to respond to them i know that i've been um a bit behind with comments that because that's because i was away during the summer and i'm kind of um you know settling in in school so i will respond to each, each and every comment and i'll be on it right so as soon as i get a comment i'll um from now going i'll be i'll be catching up to it so if you have any questions let me know and i'll do everything to respond to them take care of yourselves um have a good day have a good night have a sound sleep have a nice time and i'll see you next time with the next program all right then bye bye